Hey all, I'm currently in public, having a mild panic attack, so I'm gonna use this time to write a funny story I've wanted to tell for a while on a sub, and this sub is perfect for it. I don't think it fits in Pro Revenge, but we kinda went all out on these people over small irritations, so I'm gonna post it here. Alright, story begins a few years back. My mom and I made most of the important decisions for the house, which only included us, and my brother at the time, and my brother can't even do his schoolwork, so he got dragged along for the ride. At the time, we were deciding where to move, as our current place was expensive and shitty, and I hated the school district. I voiced this to my mom, and we immediately left that district for a lower end place, as my brother didn't like the district any more than I did, and all was well for like, the first week. And then our neighbors showed up. Only one really needs a name, so I'll refer to him as Roger. And Roger sucked. Our first interaction with him was him parking in our parking space. Something that would become a frequent occurrence for him and his friends to do. This was a pretty big issue, because the only other parking we could realistically use was three blocks away. So this definitely ruined my mom's day when it happened, and watching her mood get ruined by a dick of a neighbor was never lovely. This added up over time, so I decided to retaliate against them, first, in a small way. At the time, we were still thinking it would stop, so I did something small. I told my friend to park next to our spot and give our neighbors a taste of no parking. This didn't end well. Roger parked his car in and immediately threatened him with physical violence. My friend told him he wasn't local, and if he let him out, he'd be on his way. After I told my mom about this, she insisted that this was the last straw. Our landlord wasn't doing shit to preserve our parking, and our neighbors were threatening us with physical violence. Well what the hell are we gonna do? I asked my mom. We are gonna run the lease up, she replied, and call some friends. And call some friends we did, over time. Quickly, just because they incited our off. By taking our parking spot, we did anything and everything we could to ruin Roger's life. Anytime we saw him, we would just smile and wave. He never knew we were behind any of this. My mom contacted one of her friends, who was a sheriff. He mentioned he knew of drugs getting, allegedly, passed around in our neighborhood, but didn't know who was doing it. He told her, if we got enough evidence, they could stake out his house to grab more, and eventually, that might lead to roping him in busting him with a drug dealer. That'd be sweet. We'd finally have parking back. So we set out to collect any and every piece of evidence we could. Audio of him screaming. Recorded. We'd smell through the walls. Times and locations written down. People parking in our spots. License plates noted down. I set up a camera to automatically record them coming and going too. We had a thick book of a paper trail on when and what this guy did in his house. About 10 months into this, my mom left me out of the loop. Still not sure why, but as I understand it, my logging of license plates immediately lined up, and we found out Roger was the asshole dealing drugs. Half of the license plates we had noted down had been arrested and searched, and drugs were found. The cops were confident now, they had their guy and just needed a bit more evidence on him. This all came to a climax after Elise's long suffering. We had never used our parking spot, had walked 5 minutes away, just to get in our goddamn car, and had been threatened by, and woken up by our neighbor repeatedly. And then, just 4 days, before we were to move out, it happened. 6 law enforcement cars swarmed his perimeter. 4 of which were police cars, 2 of which were from child protective services. I saw the door get kicked down. The guy get dragged out in cuffs, along with his wife, and three kids removed from the household, and driven in the other direction. To this day, nobody except my mom's sheriff friend, who was very grateful, knew of her involvement, and according to him, the guy got quite a few years, and won't see those kids again. This happened several years ago, but first, let's meet the cast. There's me, best friend and of course the star of the show, scumbag. First a little bit of background. There was this homeless he wasn't truly homeless, scumbag who I was sheltering in my house while he looked for a place to stay. I wanted to help him out and help him back on his feet. He had been problematic for a while. He was crapping in the trash can, pissing in soda bottles everywhere and lying to everyone all the time. He wasn't even good at lying. 
He was one of those pathological liars who can't tell the truth to save their life. And when he got a BB gun he shot out my neighbor's window. This will become relevant at the end. The list of sketchy stuff scumbag did could go on for days but that's not what I'm writing this about. Though it certainly does factor into the revenge. Now onto the main event. While one of my buddies needed a ride to the train station, and I was too tired to drive, so I let him take my car and drive him to the train station. When he came back my front bumper was on the ground and he duct taped it back on. He claimed that he was t-boned at an intersection, and injured his leg. He went to the hospital, faked his injury, and came back with crutches, so I'd buy it. When I asked the police in the town he said it happened in, whom he said he had filed a report with, they told me no such event had been reported, and they had no clue what I was talking about. I later found out through my buddy, who was in the car with him, that he was doing donuts in a parking lot and hit a tree. So shame on me for letting someone drive my car I know. It was a very stupid decision on my part. The cost of repairing my car came out to be $2,000 and I couldn't get insurance to cover it, so the repairs came out of my pocket. So I gave him the benefit of the opportunity to make things right and said alright, pay for the cost of repairs and I'll forgive the transgression. He already had a minimum wage job, so I expected him to pay me every week until it was paid off. After two weeks he stopped. So I took his PS3 and Safer's collateral and said I'd give it back when he paid me back and if he didn't I'd sell it to cover the costs. A few weeks later, my best friend who was also staying with me had his wisdom teeth removed. He was in a ton of pain. That dental pain is the worst. Scumbag said he needed to go to the store. He let Scumbag take the bike to the grocery store, but after a while we became suspicious. He called saying the bike wouldn't start. I drove over to the store he said he was at, and he and the motorcycle were nowhere to be found. The store was 10 minutes away, we called him, and said bring it back now or else we'll report it stolen. When he came back later that evening with a girl, and he made up a BS excuse as to why the motorcycle had 130 miles on the odometer. The way he told it, made it clear he had no clue how mechanical odometers work. They don't glitch, and jump ahead 130 miles like said it did. My best friend would know he's constantly pulling his bike apart and making repairs and modifications to it. I grilled him about the fact that he was never where he said he was. We deduced that he had rode the bike to his hometown to pick up his girlfriend and back and lied about everything. That was the last straw that broke the camel's back and a very bad mistake. My best friend and I were trembling with rage when he threw him and his girl out the front door to the curb. This is where the nuclear revenge begins. Scumbag was dumb enough to leave all of his passwords saved on the laptop we loaned him while he was with us. We got his email and changed the password. Once you've got someone's email you've got everything else by default. We got his social media accounts and financial accounts and reset their passwords too. It was hysterical seeing the flurry of password reset emails coming in. He knew we had him in the bag, and was frantically trying to salvage his situation. He had opened a bank account at the local bank, to deposit his paychecks from his local cashier job, while he was in the area. We emptied the whole thing for a total of $2,500. Imagine my shock. I kept the $2,000 for my car, and gave the remaining $500 to best friend for his troubles, and having my back. We then sold his PS3 on Craigslist and split that 50 over 50. We eventually opened his safe, and it was full of random papers and earbuds of no value. But it did have his debit card, and one of the papers had his pin on it which is how we emptied his bank account. In addition to that, while he's on the way out I go to the store he was working at, and tell his boss he won't be showing up this afternoon and to consider him to be quit. I explained why. The manager was cool about it, but told me he can't take my word for it. In any event, he was never seen at that establishment again. So sooner or later, that manager was going to have to take my word for it. But we are not done yet. We still have a social life to destroy. We hijack his FASA book and make all of his friends hate him. We make posts about the shitty stuff he did. We make posts about eating his poop. We make posts exclaiming his love of all manner of debauchery and degeneracy. We start petty fights with his friends list in the DMs. We go onto their walls and say snarky nasty shit. We turned everyone against him. 
and in the process of destroying his social life a bunch of girls he abused and who lurked on his page came out of the word work praising us for taking him down a peg. It's been years, and he still doesn't have a social media presence. A few weeks go by, and we get a package in the mail from him. Turns out he wasn't homeless, and completely out of options like he said, big surprise I know. The package was mailed from his parents house, it's an empty threat, to Sumi overflowing with hilariously made up lies and pages of screenshots, of what we did to his social media. Me and best friend are laughing our asses off reading it. He said he left town, because the bills were too much. He never did sue us, and we even taunted his bluff with our new Facebook account. The reason why he thought this would fly, is the neighbor threatened to sue us over the window he broke, and we paid for the replacement window. So he thought, that the mere threat of a lawsuit would be enough to put an end to the revenge. I still have his lawsuit letter, because I like to read it for a good chuckle every now and then. I'm thinking of framing it on my wall as a trophy. Last I heard, he's completely destitute, and has zero friends, now that everyone knows how much of a terrible person he is. Even his parents got sick of his manipulative behavior. His girlfriend didn't take long to wise up, and apologize to us. So what's the real lesson of the story? Protect the ever-loving crap out of your email, because that's all anyone needs to gain access to everything else you do, and completely ruin you. Also don't save your passwords on the computers of the people you're screwing over. If you enjoyed the stories, slap the like and subscribe button for more of them, and don't forget to support the original writers with an upvote, links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.